Alright. This the video y'all been waiting on right here. This that home run ball. Since all of y'all have gone Lucas Matisse mad within the last 24 hours, I decided to give everybody a day to get some sleep. You know, y'all got to, to rest and then when y'all start, y'all adrenaline level starts coming back down to normal, then we can talk sensibly. I could have put out videos like everybody else just jumping on the bandwagon with the Danny Garcia, Lucas Matisse fight, but nobody was going to hear me clearly because they was going to be on cloud nine, hyped up off the Matisse win. Um, if you didn't hear my Peterson video, you can go back and listen to that. But this is called Lucas Matisse versus the world. Because I have to do this because everybody's imagination is running wild right now. So I got to bring everybody back down to center. And hopefully right now y'all at a listening stage right now. Everybody's kind of calm on everything. So let's start it off. Danny Garcia, Lucas Matisse. Well, breaking down this fight. It's going to go a very interesting way. Danny Garcia is not going to run from Lucas Matisse. Which means he doesn't have to. But if he could, Danny can box and move around the ring. I think he will let Lucas Matisse do all the moving around the ring. And then try to come in to hit him. Which is what you want because what Danny Garcia could do is counter better than Lucas Matisse because he throws shorter punches Matisse kinda winds up like a baseball like a baseball pitcher when he punches he can punch through the target but he likes to get you he needs his space so he can have you at the end of his punches Danny Garcia can beat him on the inside but if Danny can catch Zab Judah who's faster than Lucas Matisse you think he won't see Matisse punches coming when he's wide open? So that counter left hook would be there the same one he called Conway. He was able to time Amir Khan. And Amir Khan is fast. So all this about Danny Garcia being slow and it doesn't matter. It's about timing. His punches will get there. And for those who think Danny Garcia doesn't have any power well, you could ask a couple of guys about that. I think Danny Garcia could stand in the pocket with this guy and give you guys a fight you didn't expect. Who's going to win? Well, we'll wait till that comes down the line and we'll discuss that. But I think a lot of you guys are asleep or forgetting about the skills and boxing skills of Danny Garcia. He will go to the body. He can mix it up. He can throw punches in different variations where Matisse won't. His balance is a lot better than Lucas Matisse. Now what happens when he catches Lucas Matisse off balance? What's going to happen then? And that hook will be open because Matisse is such a power hungry guy that his chin is right up in the air. If you watch the fight with him and a Jose, a Jose went nine some odd rounds with him because he was standing right in the pocket with him. Matisse needs space to punch. If he doesn't have the space to punch, he's not as effective. Now, let's go to a, another breakdown of another fight. Okay? Everyone's talking about Matisse moving up to fight Floyd Mayweather. Is this act? This is kind of academic to me, but I'll entertain you. Again, Matisse comes in too wide. Floyd Mayweather will stand right in the pocket. He doesn't have to move around for Lucas Matisse. He will see the punches, same as Danny. He can block him and he can catch Lucas Matisse with a left hook at will, because Lucas Matisse comes in very wide and off balance. Floyd will pick him apart, lead right hands, 
He will keep him at bay because he won't know when to punch and when not to punch. Floyd would change the angles on him and confuse him, and that would definitely take away from his power. Lucas Matisse said he will learn a boxing lesson just like anyone else says. And let's move on. Lucas Matisse versus Manny Pacquiao. Now, this is the fight that he wants, and by him, they call him the new Manny Pacquiao. Everybody thinks this would be an exciting fight, which I think it would be for as long as it lasted. Now, this is where Matisse has a greater chance of a victory. What Manny Pacquiao does is the same thing that Lucas Matisse does as far as coming in a, but Manny comes in a straight line. They both rely on their power and they're very reluctant to duck their chins. Now, figuring that Manny Pacquiao is battle worn and battle tested, Manny might be stronger than Lucas Matisse. We don't know. Lucas is yet to fight at a higher weight, like 147, so we wouldn't know how the weight would affect him. But it would definitely be an advantage in Lucas Matisse's corner because Lucas Matisse can box and go to the body and mix it up where Manny Pacquiao falls in love with one, two punches coming straight down the middle. And Matisse is the two hand fighter. Now, who else y'all had in the list? Oh yeah, Lucas Matisse versus Amir Khan. How would that play out? Well, Amir Khan would be knocked out within seven rounds. People say, you just hate Amir Khan. I'm really assessing the fight. Amir Khan <clears throat> doesn't... <clears throat> he, he fights in an amateur style that he hasn't learned anything. He leans forward and puts all his weight on his front foot. He, he has a habit of not completely throwing the jab correctly. Of course he will circle. He doesn't protect his chin the way he should. Keeping his right hand up. He makes mistakes and keeps his head to the sky. And you can't make those kind of mistakes against a guy like Lucas Matisse. Who can end the fight with one shot. He's waiting for that. He's waiting for openings. He's waiting for you to make the mistakes. And Amir Khan just don't have the power to keep Lucas Matisse off of him. And it'll be a harder night for him than it was against Mad Marcos Madonna. He will have a much harder time with Lucas Matisse. Because Matisse can, can get to him. has a lot more speed, I think, than... Uh, Than Marcos Madonna. Which brings us to the other fight. <laughs> Lucas Matisse versus Marcos Madonna. Now Marcos Madonna. Used to beat Lucas Matisse as amateurs. I mean he had no problem with dealing with him. With the power. With anything. Because Lucas Matisse did something in those fights. That most people in the pros don't do. And the things I was just talking about. He let Lucas Matisse be first, and he countered him with power punches and landed the cleaner shots. He let him come in, he smothered the shots, then he comes in with his shots. He let Matisse go first, he blocks, then he goes. And he was successful. He landed the cleaner punches. He got a 10-8 round against uh, Lucas Matisse. Not to say they haven't improved since then but they pretty much fight the same style now Marcos Madonna will sit there and wait for his opponent to leave an opening or make a mistake and Matisse comes in try to keep you at the end of his punches and comes in using the space so it's the same thing it will be an interesting fight if it does happen but there you have it Man. Adrian Brana, Lucas Matisse, come on, man. Do we even need to go there? <laughs> uh, Adrian is, t I think Adrian has everything that this kid dreads. 
because uh, he's going to dig hard to this boy's body. Adrian's 23. And Lucas Matisse can crack, but I don't think he's going to have the opportunity to crack Adrian Bronner the way he think he is. And when Adrian Bronner puts his punches on the body and to his head with the force he, that he has, Matisse is going to feel something he probably never felt before. And that's when he's going to learn that sparring against Sergio Martinez and fighting Adrian Bronner are two different worlds. Because Adrian Bronner is going to stand in the pocket with you. And you won't be able to hit anything. And once you get through with those wild shots, he's going to take advantage of the openness that you see. And he's going to throw more.